Lee. Hello everyone, Marius here. In today's video, I will be playing Cyberpunk 2077 in VR with another great VR mod made by Luke Ross. I want to give you an extensive guide on how you can optimize your Cyberpunk 2077 VR experience. This video is mainly aimed at those of you who have low to mid-range GPUs. I will show you how I installed the VR mod, how it ran initially for me, some of Luke Ross's own tips for optimization, as well as my different settings and which frame rates I was able to achieve with my Radeon 5700 XT graphics card. Uh, then I will show you some gameplay and share some of my thoughts on this experience. Okay, let's dive into this. Uh, so, first off, I want to talk to you about uh, how I installed the VR mod for Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, this is created by Luke Ross and you can find the mod or get access to the mod through Luke Ross's Patreon. You have to pay to get access and it costs like 9 or 10 dollars. Luke Ross is the same person who made the VR mod for Red Dead Redemption 2 which I covered earlier on this channel. Uh, he has mods for uh, Grand Theft Auto 5, uh, Mafia 1, 2 and 3 and uh, Horizon Zero Dawn as well. Uh, so you head to his page, scroll down and uh, his latest release is available. Uh, you click on the zip and save it to your computer. I'm not going to do it because I've already uh, done it. Um, and when you've done that, you need to find Cyberpunk uh, in your uh, library, your game library, right? So for me, I bought the game on Steam. Um, so I just click the wheel, browse local files, and it's not here uh, uh, in the like first folder you go into. You have to click on bin x64, and there you go. There you have like you know, what what they call the main executive, uh, which is where you want to extract your VR mod. So um, once you've downloaded your VR mod, I'm gonna show you. Uh, how you do it, you find it on your computer, for you it will be in your downloads, right? Uh, you open up the latest version, and these three things here, real repo folder, open VR, and real config, you want to choose all of this and drag it over to your uh, Cyberpunk bin x64 folder where you have like the main uh, file side, Cyberpunk 2077. And that's it. Uh, after you've done that, you double click real config. Uh, I've already configured the game, so I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna close it off, I'm just showing you. You have to do that once and then you're set. Then the mod is installed, it's that simple. So, Let's talk a little bit about the optimization. Uh, I play with an Oculus Quest 2 uh, via Link Cable, uh, which I feel gives me the best uh, frame rate. Uh, I also have the game installed on my SSD, which I think makes a difference. Uh, I don't know, I just think so. Uh, I have found that if I uh, select a frame rate of 90 Hertz that gives me a little bit more FPS than if I use a lower frame rate for some reason I don't know why but I benchmark uh, benchmarked both Cyberpunk 2077 and Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, on 72 Hertz 80 Hertz and 90 Hertz and I found that 90 Hertz gives me just a little bit more FPS but it's not substantial but when you're working with a low to mid-range GPU you need all the juice you can get right so that's one thing 
I head into my Oculus settings, go to Devices, find my Oculus headset, and then go to Preferences for Graphics and change uh, my refresh rate for the headset. So uh, that's step one. Step two. I've made a document this time around uh, called the Cyberpunk 2077 Optimization. I actually think I'm going to share this um, document uh, and link it in the description of this video because uh, I only made this these um, settings for my AMD graphics card and I have no idea what works for other people with uh, with uh, uh, what's it called Nvidia cards like lower end Nvidia cards I have no idea so I think I'll share the document and uh, feel free to put in uh, details about your graphics card and which settings you use, right? That would be really cool and then we could get like a proper document just for Cyberpunk 2077 in VR. Uh, yeah, so I'm actually gonna change the name. Um, so, first, Luke Ross may gave a tip uh, which I really liked. I'm not going to cover everything he says. You can read his troubleshooting post if you're uh, in doubt about something. However, one thing. Uh, there's this <laughs> little piece of math you can do to figure out which uh, resolution you can run the game in. And that is uh, quite simple, actually. Uh, you follow this link videobenchmark.net go to uh, the site and here you have uh, a bunch of benchmarks for high-end video cards and you see if you can find your card on the list if you can't find it on the list you're in trouble then you're probably not gonna be able to run cyberpunk but most cards are on here so i just uh, do a control f to search in this uh, website and I uh, write 5700 XT and there you go there we have it no I do not have the anniversary edition no yeah there we go uh, no that's wrong there we go <laughs> the regular Radeon RX 5700 XT there are a couple of different variants right so this uh, car has a benchmark average of 16.869. So what I do is I take the square root of this number, uh, which gives me 129.88. That number I multiply with 16.65. This gives me a resolution of around 2160, which is one of the resolutions I can use with uh, Luke Ross's VR mods. 2160 by 2160. And before I even knew of this um, little piece of uh, math here, I changed my resolution to 2160 by 2160 because that felt smoother. smoother. So. I concur, <laughs> and most definitely, it's the best way to play it for me. So uh, whatever number you get is the resolution which will probably work the best with your uh, PC. Um, so for me, this is what works the best. However, uh, the frame rate I get from this is not quite high enough for me, so I uh, kind of pushed it a little bit farther farther with some additional settings so we're gonna dive into some of these settings here my card my graphics card as i said is a radeon rx 5700 xt which is an amd card um, standard when i just booted up the game after installing it without changing anything it ran with around 44 frames per second. Uh, then it was uh, by default on a 2430 by 2430 resolution. Um, and I was playing with like 72 Hz. Uh, 
Um, when I changed that to 90 hertz, I got it around one more FPS when doing a benchmark. Um, 2160 by 2160, when I changed it to that and nothing else, only changed the resolution, I got around 53 frames per second with 72 hertz and uh, 54 per frames per second with 90 hertz. Um, changing it to 1890 by 1890 gave me 65 frames per second, right? So uh, basically every step in resolution gave me around 10 frames per second, right? A boost of around 10 frames per second. Um, so, uh, that, that was the thing I did first, adjusting the in-game resolution. Secondly, I tried some of the graphics sliders. When it comes to Cyberpunk 2077, uh, Luke Ross has already optimized the graphics as much as possible. Everything is uh, by default on low or turn off, uh, basically, because the game is quite demanding, right? However, uh, there are some things in the graphics settings which you can adjust to boost your FPS. And one of those things is the FSR preset slider. Um, so, first thing I uh, kind of did was I just messed around with all of the different settings and here I have one which is uh, uh, trying 2700 by 2700 with 90 hertz and FSR preset set to quality. And that gave me actually 60 frames per second, however uh, the, ga the game uh, gets downscaled quite substantially to be able to uh, the resolution is that da downscaled and upscaled quite significantly to be able to put out this FPS and it looks like a mess actually so it doesn't it does not look like 2700 by 2700 um, so this didn't really work all that much however uh, if you put the FSR mod uh, excuse me, not mod, uh, 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 what's it called, setting, the setting in-game, the FSR setting, if you put that on ultra, then it doesn't impact your resolution as much. So I would definitely advise you to uh, stick with ultra. I'm actually gonna delete this so that I don't uh, confuse people who are reading this document, as you saw. This is deleted now. Uh, so with FSR on Ultra, uh, it does downscale the image quite a lot, but it looks quite substantially better. And when playing with uh, the resolution of 2160 by 2160 and uh, enabling FSR and putting the preset on Ultra, uh, uh, moving the slider to Ultra, right? Then I got actually 72 frames per second. So uh, I started off like initially booting the game, uh, not doing anything, getting 44 frames per second and changing two things. <laughs> the resolution, just dropping it down one notch and uh, putting FSR, the slider, the FSR slider on ultra and that gave me almost 30 frames per second. Like, that's insane, man. So, uh, that, um, <laughs> that thing is quite effective um, and pretty well implemented in the game. However, the visuals do get a little bit uh, fuzzy or muddy when you use FSR. So it looks more like 1660 by 1660 or what it was then it looks like um, 2160 by 2160 that's kind of my main issue with this however it, it looks pretty good actually i do think so that's my personal opinion um, and it performs insanely well like 
insanely well. Personally, I, li I like the look of FSR. I'm going to show you these settings uh, now in the game. Okay? Uh, just give me a sec here. So, we talked a little bit about the FSR, right? So, uh, you can see for yourself how this looks um, in the document, right? Because I'm going to share this. Uh, I tried with 2430 by 2430 and uh, the preset on Ultra as well. As I said, you should push it to Ultra. Uh, the other FSR settings uh, makes the game look a little bit too fuzzy in my opinion. Ultra works though. Uh, so with 2430 by 2430 I got 60 frames per second uh, and it didn't downscale the image as much. I think 60 frames per second works totally fine. Um, that's my personal opinion, uh, and we're all different in what we are able to accept or not accept. When uh, 72 works really well for anyone, <laughs> the benchmark is done in real time, right? So these numbers change every time you do the benchmark. So once I got like yeah, 72 frames per second and another time I got like 68 frames per second. Cy Cyberpunk 2077 has been quite a lot criticized for not being optimized well enough uh, from the get-go. So um, if you're having troubles with your frame rate, I do recommend just restarting the game. So just bear that in mind when doing benchmarks. You need to do more than one, and I've done a lot of benchmarks, so I'm not going to do any more benchmarks for this video. <laughs> I'm so tired of that benchmark, but as you see, I've done a lot of them. Uh, so the FSR slider works really well. However, what I kind of fell in love with was the dynamics uh, resolution scaling in Cyberpunk 2077. Because that makes the game look much, much prettier. Uh, and it works kind of similar to how FSR works. Or it, it, it looks pretty much the same. However, you're able to um, render it internally at a much higher resolution. So, I'm going to show you this right now. These settings. So... Now I'm playing with, uh, with uh, the FSR enabled. So you see, uh, my uh, resolution is 2160 by 2160. However, it renders at uh, 1662 by 1662, which makes the image actually look like something in between 2160 by 2160 and 1662 by 1662. However, it performs like 1662 by 1662. So here I'm getting like over like an average of uh, around 70 frames per second. In the least uh, busy places I get like uh, 80 frames per second. And in the most busy places, most GPU intensive places, I get like 60 frames per second. Right? So that's quite uh, nice, like you get a super smooth experience with this thing enabled. However, it does impact the uh, visuals quite substantially. So um, if we go down here and we'll turn this off. Fidelity FX Super Resolution, as it's called, FSR. We'll go ahead and turn that to Auto and turn, up, turn on Dynamic resolution scaling and it looks much the same as FSR however you get much more uh, you get much more um, settings to, to adjust right so now it's rendered internally with a resolution of 1879 by 1879 as you see uh, and the target resolution is 2160 by 2160 and this looks a heck of a lot more crisp and it looks, it looks like 2160 by 2160, uh, like a combination of those two resolutions. However, it, I think personally, this is just my personal opinion, 
I think this actually looks better than 2160 by 2160, uh, which kind of sounds a little bit weird, but the thing is that it it softens the image a little bit uh, in a way that I personally like. Yeah, I really, really like that. This gives me an average of around 60 FPS. So um, that's when I have dynamic resolution scaling enabled. Uh, and 60 FPS, uh, that will give me like 70 in the less demanding areas and 50 in the most demanding areas, like generally speaking, and then like an average of around 60 or something. Uh, so, this slider you can adjust to any value. Uh, at 87 minimum resolution, that is like the percentage of my target resolution 2160 by 2160. Uh, if I drop this much lower, I would get a much higher frame rate, but it would impact the image quality quite substantially. So, uh, as you see on my um, uh, document here, I've done a whole lot of different uh, types of settings here. Like we have 66 frames per second, 55, 50, 56, 60. So it's all over the place, basically. Um, my favorite resolutions though, my favorite graphics settings for this game is um, 2160 by 2160 uh, with FSR preset on ultra. This gives me 72 frames per second, even though the image looks quite blurry and fuzzy compared to um, other resolutions um, and not having this effect. However, it gives me an insane uh, performance. Um, and 2160 by 2160 with dynamic re resolution scaling uh, at 87% of uh, the target resolution. This might not be the thing for you, but for me, this looks neat, <laughs> right? And it uh, performs well for me. In the most demanding areas, I can just turn this off and switch this back to Ultra, and then I get another 10 FPS. So that's what's so nice about this technique. Uh, and in the area when I'm just like walking around, seeing the world, driving my car, whatever, in gunfights, usually I can just put this on auto and turn this on and it remembers my settings. And that's it. I do recommend that you restart the game with some uh, regular intervals because uh, the game has a tendency to run badly if it's been uh, if you're if you've been playing for a while and all of a sudden like for some weird ass reason it just doesn't want to run <laughs> right so uh, yeah do restarts okay gameplay time so here we have the beautiful world of cyberpunk 2077 in glorious vr man this this is like such a treat i can't even uh, begin to explain it to you it's like discovering the game for the first time uh, i had much more wow moments with this game in vr than i did in flat screen and there's so insanely much detail here like there's this guy just pissing here like <laughs> there's so much yes there's so much stuff going on in this world. Here's someone enjoying VR. Yeah. I totally get it that you want to enjoy some VR. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah, so... Uh, and this game has to be one of the most... Uh, it has to be one of the most immersive games out there, just like generally speaking. 
There's so much going on. And you kind of get that feeling from the flat screen work version, but you get it so much more with in VR. And you get so many like wow moments with this title. Just like looking up in this game is just wow, right? Just looking ahead of yourself, seeing uh, smoke coming up and out of everything and seeing like cyborgs or whatever. It's just a wow after wow after wow experience all the time. I do feel like the most immersive part of this game is just uh, experiencing the story actually. I gotta say, um, that is my personal opinion. The gameplay is awesome, but you get so immersed in, er, into it, like every character and every line of dialogue and everything, while playing it in VR. Uh, much more so for me than uh, with the flat screen version. <laughs> yeah, here you see like things happening all over all the time something is always happening in this game so the shooting is pretty great uh, it works like um, the shooting usually does in Luke Ross's mods and I personally I'm actually a big fan of how it how he did it I've heard a couple of people criticize um, there not being any um, motion controls However, personally, I really enjoy this way of playing games. I, like, I love playing games with the gamepad, and it's kind of like uh, something in between playing with a mouse and keyboard and playing with the gamepad, because aiming feels much, much more natural when you do it with your hand. It's much easier to aim with your head than it is to aim with your analog stick. But you still have that comfort of holding your controller, right? <laughs> I've never tried this thing. Yeah, most definitely. We're, we're taking this. Oh my god, this car looks so bad. So capturing video definitely has a huge impact on uh, the performance. Because it usually feels much more smooth than this when I'm playing. Yeah. Hey. That's what's so cool about this game, right? Everyone is uh, strapped to the teeth. <laughs> Let's check out my character here. Before you ask, you're not gonna see her without clothes. <clears throat> nah, just kidding. Yeah, no, you're not. Sorry. Okay. Uh, can I, like, make a cool outro? Here we go. And then we go ahead and we change this to <laughs> thank you for watching uh, thank you for watching <laughs> there we go uh, there you have it folks cyberpunk 2077 running in vr I hope today's video was uh, useful for you and that you can use some of these uh, tips and tricks yourself. Uh, if you like the video, please uh, click the thumbs up button, uh, leave a comment down below and subscribe for future flat screen to VR videos. I really enjoy making these and uh, there's so much cool games you can play in your headsets, so stay tuned. Catch you on the next one guys. See ya.